With Pika Labs 1.0, is AI video generation having its breakout moment? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with an exciting new product launch. In fact, one that some people are calling one of the most exciting product launches of the year. The launch is from Pika Labs, Pika 1.0, and what it is is a text to video generation platform, or as they call it, an idea to video platform that brings your creativity to life. So there's a lot that is very cool about this tool. First of all, not only does it allow you to go from an idea written in plain text to a video, but it also allows you to edit your own videos and change aspects of them in the same way that, for example, Generative Fill does for photos in Adobe Photoshop. The example they use in their launch video is a woman who's changing her top as she walks down the street or adding sunglasses to a monkey. There's also the ability to resize videos and expand them automatically, which again, even the image version of this feature was getting people excited just a few months ago. Let's actually just briefly watch this launch video so you can get a feel for what this product offers. Now, in addition to the announcement that the company was launching Pika 1.0, they also announced a $35 million Series A led by Lightspeed. The company was founded by two women from Stanford, one of whom, Demi Guo, recently left her Stanford AI PhD to build this company. Now, I think in many ways, Andre Karpathy from OpenAI has the best description of why this is such an exciting development and what this says about the state of this particular field. He writes, you know how image generation went from blurry 32 by 32 texture patches to high resolution images that are difficult to distinguish from real and roughly the snap of a finger? The same is now happening along the time axis extended to video, and the repercussions boggle the mind just a bit. Every human becomes a director of multimodal dreams, like the architect in Inception. Coming back to Earth for a second, image and video generation is a perfect match for data hungry neural nets because data is plentiful, and the pixels of each image or video are a huge source of bits on the parameters of the network. When you're training giant neural nets in supervision-rich settings, your train loss equals validation loss, and life is so good. So here we have Andre being excited about this, both from the standpoint of technology and how this opens up new sets of information to training AI models, but also because of the unlocking of human creativity that this is going to create. Now, even other nominal competitors are excited about this launch. Imad Mustak from Stability AI, who just launched their own stable video diffusion model last week, writes, amazing work by Pika Labs. Congrats to Chen Lin Meng and Demi Guo, shipping great stuff with a small, talented, and focused team. I don't think this is just him being gracious. I think that the folks who are building these models understand that right now, it's a rising tide lifts all boats kind of moment when it comes to AI video generation. It really does seem like a very exciting product and one that I can't wait to dig into further. Next up, yesterday we were talking about QSTAR and how its capacity to do grade school math might have been the thing that freaked out the OpenAI board sufficiently to actually go out and fire Sam Altman. Well, now there is a $10 million competition to fund the development of AI models that can reason mathematically. The announcement page writes, XTX Markets is launching a new $10 million challenge fund, the Artificial Intelligence Mathematical Olympiad Prize, or AIMO Prize. The fund intends to spur the development of AI models that can reason mathematically, leading to the creation of a publicly shared AI model capable of winning a gold medal in the International Mathematical Olympiad. The grand prize of $5 million will be awarded to the first publicly shared AI model to enter an AIMO-approved competition and perform at a standard equivalent to a gold medal in the IMO. There will also be a series of progress prizes totaling up to $5 million for publicly shared AI models that achieve key milestones towards the grand prize. Now, it seems like there are two different goals here. One is to actually get people working on this particular problem set and to actually dedicate their brain power to solving this challenge of getting AI to reason mathematically, but then the other is to spur that development in a way that is open to the public. In other words, they don't want this innovation to be limited to OpenAI or Anthropic or any closed lab and instead want it to be widely available. Now, if this is something that excites you, 
It appears that they are hiring a director to lead this AIMO prize right now. XTX Markets founder Alex Gerko writes, First order of business with AIMO prize, we're looking for somebody to run this exciting project. So if that's you, that is something to maybe check out. Next up today, a big dust-up around AI-generated content. CNN Business writes, Sports Illustrated deletes articles published under fake author names and AI-generated profile photos. So basically, it appears like Sports Illustrated was experimenting with AI-generated content. That means not only using AI to write content, but actually inventing fake authors as well. All of this came to light after the site FutureSim started investigating and found, as CNN put it, that the magazine had repeatedly published articles whose authors could not be found online outside the Sports Illustrated website. The articles were all accompanied by AI-generated profile photos that FutureSim also found for sale on digital marketplaces that sell AI-produced headshots. Continuing, they write, During the course of FutureSim's reporting, some of the alleged Sports Illustrated writers mysteriously vanished from the publication's website, and their articles began appearing under the names of different authors who similarly didn't appear to exist online, and whose likenesses were also being sold on AI headshot marketplaces. Now, obviously right now, there are no exactly agreed-upon ethics when it comes to AI-generated content in publications and content websites. Certainly, this is something that people are experimenting with, often facing a lot of backlash when they do. One thing that is almost definitely for sure, though, is that people do not like being lied to and tricked. It's one thing to have a publisher say, hey, we're going to test AI publishing. Check out this article, see if you like it. This might be something we do in the future, this might be something we don't do. It's another thing entirely to try to create fake avatars that trick people into thinking it's real, when actually it's been generated by AI. In fact, this seems to be one of the areas that there is wide bipartisan agreement in potential upcoming AI legislation that publishers and platforms are going to have to identify when something is created by AI so as to not sow disinformation and mistrust. For their part, the company that operates and licensed Sports Illustrated, the Arena Group, told news outlets that all of this content had been created by a third-party company, Advon Commerce. The spokesperson said, quote, we have learned that Advon had writers use a pen or pseudoname in certain articles to protect author privacy, actions we don't condone, and we are removing the content while our internal investigation continues and have since ended the partnership. Now, according to this, the Arena Group also says that although they use those fake images, that, quote, Advon has assured us that all of the articles in question were written and edited by humans. I would just like to insert the raised eyebrow emoji here, as something about that doesn't really track. Now, following the report, the Union of Sports Illustrated Writers, which is called the Sports Illustrated Union, said that its members were, quote, horrified by these allegations. In a statement, they wrote, If true, these practices violate everything we believe in about journalism. We deplore being associated with something so disrespectful to our readers. Emma Basilieri, a staff writer for the magazine, also posted on X, saying, Along with basic principles of honesty, trust, journalistic ethics, etc., I take seriously the weight of a Sports Illustrated byline. It meant something to me long before I ever dreamed of working here. This report was horrifying to read. Now, of course, this is not the first, nor will it be the last experiment with AI-generated human alternatives. You may have seen a story about a new AI model, Aitana, who was designed by a Spanish agency and has accumulated over 120,000 followers on Instagram since launching over the summer. The AI-generated model is apparently earning up to $10,000 a month on brand deals. There is basically an endless amount that we could discuss on this, and indeed my guess is that entire sociology thesis will be dedicated to this this year. Now beyond just models or Sports Illustrated writers, there is apparently a large sense among regular people that AI could be coming for their jobs. In fact, Fox Business published a piece this morning titled Two-Thirds of Americans Say AI Could Do Their Job. The reporting was on a recent survey conducted by Spokio, which found that of over a thousand respondents, 66.6% .6 of them said that AI could carry out their workplace duties, and nearly 75% of them said that they were concerned about the technology's impact on their industry. Now, interestingly, Spokio CEO Harrison Tang pointed out that this might be about their actual job tasks being able to be automated, but it also might be about how much the media has presented AI as a great disruptor. Tang said, whether it's because people realize that a lot of work can be easily automated or they believe the hype in the media that AI is more advanced and powerful than it is, the AI box has now been opened. Yes, indeed it has, and I am glad you are here exploring this new world with me. That's going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.